Hello everybody and welcome back to Forgecraft the mod pack with Technojock. When I last left you we were on the hunt for a hungry node or we were on the hunt for Mistcraft libraries that would be able to make let us make a, uh, a flat desert world that would be easier to find hungry nodes on. Mistcraft uh, libraries in this world however were proving to be somewhat um, rare or rarer than I was anticipating. However, after a not inconsiderable amount of flying around, we have found ourselves a hungry node down here. You can see it there. And it's uh, happily destroying the terrain over here. It's eaten a couple of monsters. And uh, the zombie's having a hard time. I think I'm going to be very careful not to get too close because um, I don't have any way of getting out. And it is pulling me forward. Even from this range, it's pulling me in. And you can see it's starting to destroy the terrain. So, um, unfortunately, I don't have a link, an unlinked linking book here. But um, what I am going to do is I'm going to uh, set up something so we can get our way forward a bit with this. I'm going to... This should be okay out here. We'll make ourselves a little platform, much like we normally uh, would spawn into a Miscraft Age on. And uh, we can set down our linking book. I'll try and lead this guy over. Well, this really is pulling me in. Okay, let's just not mess around here. Now, there is quite a few monsters over there. There's one of those energy ghosts over there, and I've got no idea how to kill those. Um, and I would much, much rather the node take care of them um, than I have to do something. Okay, so we can do that. I can put that on there. Now we're going to need to make our uh, waypoint. Hungry node there. So our way home is, oh yeah, I found a big terra node in case I was wanting to um, energize something there. So it's 4,000 blocks there, so it's not very bad, but uh, yeah, let's see if we can get some of these, some of these guys to follow me in. Oh, come on. Yeah, he's having a bad day as well. So what I'll be able to do here, it's not ideal because there's not a huge amount of room around about it to be able to uh, manoeuvre without actually getting sucked into it. But we will work with this. There we go. That energy ghost can die. Even with this sword, it doesn't hurt them. I don't know. It must need to do some sort of um, different kind of damage to be able to kill them. Void damage clearly works, though. There we go. He's having a bad day. That skeleton's going to have a bad day. So let's get home and um, think on a way of capturing this hungry node. Um, I do have an idea but we can s of how to capture it. It's quite an elaborate plan. But um, I've also got a way of feed. So we'll get home. And it's raining again. Let's see if we can only sleep at night. Okay, so... What are we going to do to feed it? Now, I think that... You know, I'll learn that already, have I? Okay. Um, I think that the best thing to feed it is actually gold. Because um, gold's got Lucrum on it, and Lucrum breaks down to uh, all of the um, primal aspects. A great wood sapling to have I. Oh, I haven't learned that. And I should maybe learn a great wood log as well. That'll be fine. So, yes, it breaks down to all of the. or can break down to any of the primal aspects. Anyway, so we want to find some way of feeding this thing. So, 
one of the best ways is just to drop stuff into it. One of the best ways just to drop stuff into it is through an open crate. Anything you put into an open crate just drops straight through it, which is ideal. That's what we want. We also want to have um, something to craft things with. And Steve's factory manager is going to be our friend with this one. So if we have an open crate with Steve's factory manager on it, and we have a um, ooh, if we were to get ourselves an ender chest or two ender chests, ender chests could bung some of this wood straight into the, and then the, yeah, that would work. That would work quite well, actually. I think we need another chest to work with in the inter immediate time and then if we get ourselves an ender chest yeah so we need blaze rods wool chest ender pal and obsidian so blaze rods one two three and four one two three and four that'll give us our two and one two three and four one to learn ender pearl one chest, one, two, and three, and uh, we want wool, one, two, and three bits of wool. I will get some brown dye, I think, to do this, because brown for wood. Um, and what else was it? Obsidian, two obsidian pair. So, six obsidian. And we can make that, like that, and there we go. I suppose it's too much to ask for. So I've got brown dye. No, brown does not count. We do, however, have that. I think, do I have it? Yes, I do. So if we go brown, brown, and then don't need three, don't want three, never mind. So let's have that export wood into it. What do we have in here in terms of we got one of those, that'll do. Uh, quick. Ooh. Don't need that coming down here. Okay, and if we hit extract with that, that's going to start filling up. Which is exactly what we need. Superb! And then I moved that down here. Yeah, we're okay. Okay, so that's us done at this end. Now if we get back to the... Uh, Is that not pulling out that spruce sapling? Hmm. That's gone now. 
is going slowly, but it should be okay. We might need to up that actually, but um, there's so we've got source of wood, a thing to turn wood into other stuff, a place to sp store that host that's being turned into other stuff, and a thing to drop it down into the hungry node. Let's clear our inventory a little bit more. And that, and that out. And pop that back in there. Now, what else we're going to need is we're going to need a chunk loader for here and there. And we're going to need um, an angel block so we can go up into the sky above that and drop from a safe distance because we don't want our contraption to be eaten either. So, angel block. It's feathers and obsidian uh, and gold as well, I think. Obsidian, two feathers and gold. Cool. One obsidian. Learn this. Four and some gold. I've got two gold there. No point in doing that. That and that and that. Yes, we can learn that. Okay, we're looking good. So next up we need some sort of chunk loader. So chunk loader. We've got the MFR chunk loader, but we've got real craft, so I think we've got anchors as well. World anchor, personal anchor, passive anchor, and admin anchor. We've not got spot loaders as well. No, we don't. Okay then. And let's see. Oh, can't do that. Passive anchor. What does that do? No idea. I think we'll make the personal anchor. Oh, the world anchor? World anchor can be fueled. Let's do the world anchor. I think that'd be better in the long term. So we need two obsidian. So we need four obsidian. And these can be that. okay then. Let's do. Let's do this then. So we need that. So gold. One, two, one, two. We need obsidian. Oh, we need more than that in gold. That makes for two. Ugh. Getting this all round and about. Oh, I'm just about out of EMC as well. That's not. That's not ideal. Oh no, I'm not. I've got plenty. Some sort of visual bug again. Okay, and I need one ender pearl par, two, three ender pearls, and diamonds. Yep. Oh, this is done something weird again. Oh no, what? Diamonds. There we go. That's better. So if we do world anchor like that, make three, learn one of them, and we'll need some ender pearls. And uh, not that many ender pearls.
we will need two stacks because we'll do one here and we'll do one there. Okay, so place to put this. Mm, I would say that here is pretty good place for it. Yeah, I'm just going to put it here and go there. So we are chunk loaded here, that's fine. And we can immediately see that. It's not the prettiest block in the world, but it's what we require. Um, and I will need an unlinked linking book to go back to that spot. So one link panel page. Anything in that, let's get rid of this because this is going to be the spot to go to our hungry node. And we're going to put that there. And we're going to have. Did I have leather in here? No, I've done something with all my leather. So we'll take one out of there. We'll take that and that to make our unlinked panel. And we've got to go back to our world. I have got everything with me. I have the chunk loader, I have the angel block, I have the machine inventory manager, I have a chest, I have the crate, I have the ender chest that's going to do it, and I've got a ender pearl. I think we're good to go. Okay. Yeah. I'm not altogether sure why we're getting that. Right. It's going to take me a little while to fly over there, so see you in a second. Okay, we're coming up on the Hungry Node now. So we'll get ready to... There's a bit of hive or something glowing down there. Get ready to place our, uh, our angel block directly above this. So that's, that's going to be directly above here. And if we put that there, brilliant. So what we want to do is stick our open crate on top of that, and then we can start the rest of our build. Now, let's be very, very careful not to drop anything. Now let's see where the chunk boundaries are as well. Where? Wow, we're right on the edge of this chunk, but uh, that's not too bad. That should be okay. A little party of uh, creatures being killed down there. That's fine. That will help grow the node as well. So, if we put our factory manager on top of that, we put the ender chest there, we put the normal chest on the other side and we can put our world anchor there which we shall put that in for the fuel and what else do we need to do that's us for that so i'll quickly do some uh, programming of the steve's factory manager and be right back Right, that's us programmed the, uh, the factory manager, and as you can see, it's dropping the crafted benches. So that's fine. So, let's have a quick look at this. One trigger splits into two flows. One takes logs from the ender chest, crafts them into planks, and puts them into the chest over here. Like that. It's only doing a stack at a time, so that's fine. And then what it's doing is, in this one, it's taking planks from that chest and then crafting them into the crafting table. And it's dumping them out to the open crate. And I'm just doing... Oh, I'll come back out of that. And it's just doing five at a time. So there's no point in dumping all of our trees straight into it. Because I think it takes a little bit of time for the hungry node to actually eat them and convert them and I think it's got to limit the amount of aspects it can eat and convert at once so I'm just keeping it to five at a time at the moment and dropping those straight in there so you can see them going in and sort of bouncing about for a bit but it is swallowing them so that's fine I can't get much closer than this otherwise I'll get sucked in 
So if we leave that going for the time being, we can keep an eye on it now and again, just to make sure everything's going okay. And we'll just keep an eye on our wood supply. I think it'll be perfectly okay. The size of our tree farm uh, can more than cope with that. The other thing that I wanted to do was uh, kill this zombie before he tries to attack us. But also I wanted to set our unlinked linking book that we made earlier and go boop and make that. So let's go back to the overworld and name it to something sensible. Um, I think if we put it in, where can we put it? In there. So it's not random world three that we're going to. It is hungry node. Perfect. And we can pop that there. So that's ideal. We can go straight to the hungry node whenever we want. And that's it loaded. And if we have a look at our wood supply, it is going, but not very quickly. Yeah, this is going to cope with that. Absolutely no problem at all. We can probably up that a little bit later on. We could maybe add, m we can maybe make it spit out more crafting benches, or maybe we could add more um, open crates and have it spit out more individual ones. I don't know if it matters if they're in a stack. Maybe it only counts one stack, regardless of whether it's got one in it or 64 in it. Maybe it only converts a stack at a time, um, and maybe having actual individual things, like rather than just going and throwing a whole lot out like that and see how it's grouped together, perhaps if it went and spat them out like that, it might make more of a difference. So, I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody that's got a bit more experience of Hungry Nodes would be able to tell me. However, that does take us quite nicely up to sort of a, a wrapping up point just now. So, uh, next time we, I think, will start laying out over there, or maybe we'll do more with the Hungry Node. Um, I don't know. We'll wait and see. So, but anyway, until the next time, bye-bye, everybody.